The release of Stellaris Overlord adds three new mega structures to the game, although two of them, namely the Hyper Relay and the Orbital Ring, are Kilo structures. They do not require mega engineering, unlike the Quantum Catapult that does. Today we're going to take a look at them in a little bit more depth, see how much they cost, how they function, and how they can be useful to you as a player. First, there is the orbital rings. Orbital rings are essentially extensions of your planets that allow for hyper-specialization of the infrastructure below. What you do is select a construction ship and on the planetary window, go towards build megastructure and get yourself the orbital ring. The orbital ring will cost you 50 influence and 1000 alloys, but that is only the very first stage. In addition, it will take you about two years to construct, but like I said, this is only the very first stage of it. Once the first stage of the orbital ring is done, you have the option to go into a little bit more depth. It functions very similarly to, say, a space station, where you have modules that you can attach to the actual structure. Now, at Tier 1, the only thing that you can really do is either add habitation modules. Habitation modules are really useful because they add additional districts on the planet that apply to any district and we can actually navigate down to the planet by clicking on the planet view button so if i would add an additional habitational district here any of the districts that are available would get uh, an additional module or district availability this adds up to a plus one in the planet size effectively and when you max out the actual orbital ring this can go, go all the way up to four of course these are not your own options you can totally build orbital shipyards anchorages defensive systems at etc on top of this for pretty decent defensive positions within solar systems and especially if you're running i don't know the wonders of the worm you can turn a system into a literal fortress but there is more to this once you upgrade a ring world to say tier 2 with a base cost of 1500 it is a little bit lower here due to some modifiers that are active uh, and as well as 100 influence, once again, modifiers are active in this particular case, you will be able to upgrade to the next stage, and you will end up with an additional module. Once again, habitational modules are incredibly useful in this case because it adds additional districts to the planet below. However, this is not where the biggest bonus for the place comes from. It has to do with the buildings. Now the buildings on Ringworlds are incredibly useful. They are, at first, the standard structures that you can have on a standard station. Communication jammers, transit hubs, etc. Particularly useful is a transit hub, of course, if you have one in a system, migration will be a lot easier. So it's always useful to have one of those. And however, you probably want to build one of those on one of the space stations instead. However, the real power comes from the specialized buildings that we have. The low gravity uh, mega refinery, the stratospheric ionization elements, climate optimization stations, etc. all give extremely good bonuses. In this particular case, the climate Opera optimization station gives plus two food to farmers. And considering this is a planet that is completely focused on food and with the total population of farmers being 22, it means that it generates 44 additional food per planet. And this can get out of control really, really quickly. Let's say that we go to our final version of this, the final stage, the tier three, where we have four modules that we can add for ridiculous results where we can get even more districts on our planet. And especially if it's an ecumenopolis, like in this particular case, we can use buildings like the alloy processing facilities that adds additional alloys to metallurgists or in this particular case as well orbital logistics systems which gives even more consumer goods per district as well this means if you have a hyper specialized world with a lot of workers in particular jobs you can in some cases essentially double the output of a planet this goes a lot further than the planetary specialization that we would see under the uh, upgrade and tier ascension tiering but it is incredibly powerful Tier 3 has a base cost of 2,000 alloys, and once again, you will need to spend influence, 150 in this particular case, and once again, it will take a little bit longer to build. Then we move on towards the next kilo structure. It is, of course, the Hyper Relay Network. 
Hyper relays on their own may not seem all that impressive. They are relatively cheap. They cost 25 influence and 500 alloys as well as 100 rare crystals. Ironically, the 100 rare crystals is most likely the most difficult thing to get for building these. And just having one of them is not necessarily the best thing you need to, have, to do, because you kind of need two of these in order to link them together. Hyper Relays by themselves are not necessarily the most impressive megastructure, but slowly over time they turn into a massive network that be could be considered its own large megastructure itself. Hyper Relays in addition give pretty impressive bonuses because what they do is they connect systems to other systems in a quick and efficient manner. Normally a fleet would need to slow boat across an entire system to get jump point to jump point. Instead with hyper relays they can skip very quickly through to the next system, essentially decreasing the amount of transit times between places and allowing you to deploy fleets through your empire or your vassal's empire extremely quickly. And of course, it's also one of the few megastructures that can be built by going into the map screen, right clicking on a place and trying to build a hyper relay. In this particular case, if I had the influence, I would totally do so. Of course, there's more to hyper relays than just moving from system to system even quicker. There is also several edicts attached to it. Network dominance essentially increases stability in, net in systems that have hyper relays in them, which can be incredibly useful if you want to make sure that your empire is nice and stable, your population happy, and you can, of course, then produce more goods. For 64 uh, unity in this particular case, totally worth it. The base cost is probably significantly lower, but very, very nice indeed. In addition, there is also network movement, which works similarly, except it increases the chance of uh, automatic resettlement, essentially making sure your populations move quicker, and it's essentially a replacement of the transit hub. The network amenities also does the same thing. As long as you have a hyper relay in a system, it will reduce the amount of amenities consumed in that system by 10%, which is rather nice. But this is not the end of it. No, if you have a set of vassals of every single variety, a prospectorium, a scholarium, as well as a bulwark, further bonuses will be applied. At tier 1, the Overlord can get a planetary build speed modifier of 25% and a building costs a decrease of also 25% from the Prospectorium. Bulwarks, on the other hand, will give you a reduction in crime as well as increase the amount of planetary defense armies by 2. Sadly, the Scholarium at this point in time doesn't give any additional bonuses to the Hyper Relay Network, which is a little bit of a shame, but it is very, very nice to have in general. Hyper Relays are incredibly useful. You can build them pretty much anywhere. They are relatively cheap. You can build them in under a year, and you can connect your space together incredibly quickly plus the bonuses from basils as well as the bonuses from edicts are incredibly powerful and i would not be surprised if we're going to see more of this system in the future in addition if you connect a home world of another species that is friendly to you to your own network you'll get a nice little pop-up that says yay you are connected but it doesn't do anything beyond that in warfare if you capture a system that has a hyper relay network inside of it you will immediately capture it and it will automatically connect to any of the other areas that you've already conquered which allows you to deploy your fleets even faster which is rather nice when you think about it especially when you're at war which brings us to our last mega structure a true mega structure the quantum catapult the Quantum Catapult is a late game megastructure, or if you're playing as the Slingshot to the Star's Origin, then you will get it right off the get-go. And essentially what it does is it builds a special structure around a Pulsar and a Pulsar only, where you can allow your fleets to be launched across the galaxy. It comes in several tiers, and Quantum Catapult can be pretty pricey at 3 100 influence. It's one of the few uh, megastructures that actually cause influence. The Hyper Relay does it, the Quantum Catapult itself does it, as well as Ring Worlds. Gateways are in addition uh, also one of these, but basically the point is a Quantum Catapult is considered to be a logistics structure, and therefore it costs influence. And for 5000 alloys it is pretty decent, at least for what you get off the start. 
It is essentially a giant yeet machine that will send your fleets across the galaxy. However, you cannot use it until you've spent at least 15,000 alloys until you can get it to stage one. Once you've got it up to that stage, you will be greeted with this particular number. The amount of missing in action time for fleets will reduce. So if you have a fleet that is behind enemy lines and you want to send it back, as example, let's take this fleet and you would want to return it and normally they would disappear, the time that they would be gone would be reduced. In this particular case, we can now have a quantum catapult that will shoot stuff across the stars for us. However, uh, we do that with this catapult fleet button. Sally, we can only do this in the uh, in the galaxy view. Now, the thing with the quantum catapult is, is that the less developed it is, the less accurate it is. Also, if we launch it to somewhere close, there is a higher chance of it actually landing on its destination compared to, say, across the galaxy, where the chances of it actually arriving to where we want it to be is significantly lower. There is also an initial range to this quantum catapult, so we'll make sure that you build it into the center of the galaxy. But yeah, we have this button and essentially we can click and now our fleet will arrive in one of the systems that are currently highlighted. So essentially anything within this line. Let's hope it does not arrive in the middle of this particular place, i.e. the center of the mercenaries. The fleet will now start to... Um, increase its spool up time it will start to jump and in eight days it is gone so the ship is now on the other side of the galaxy at least not necessarily across the other side of the galaxy but within range of the catapult and now it can deploy this is incredibly useful for uh, for raiding empires marauders etc because if you want to go ahead and raid and steal other empires as pops this is a great way to shoot yourself across their lines and send your fleets out and especially if you're stuck behind say i don't know marauders or a fallen empire this is a great way of breaking yourself free for a cost of an additional 10,000 alloys, you'll be able to increase the Quantum Catapult to Tier 2, where you can essentially have a larger range and be more accurate. So if we do this once again, we can see that if we would want to fling next door, we would essentially be guaranteed to land there. But also our range is now increased, so we can essentially launch ourselves across the galaxy to over here. And of course, over time, as the, as the level of the Catapult increases to, say, the next one we can essentially move our fleet even further and essentially what it also boils down to is that at some point at least as long as you've placed your quantum catapult in a reasonable location you can deploy your fleets efficiently across the galaxy so my construction ship is now on its way and it will land in one of these systems is it going to land anywhere useful probably not because it tried to land into a place that has the borders close to us which meant that it would automatically be returned to our space but yeah quantum catapults are very interesting uh, for late game especially for deploying your fleet unlike the psionic jump drive or the normal jump drive there is no cooldown or any malice when it comes to deploying um your fleets from a military point of view there is no issues with firepower being halved etc what you do want to keep in mind is that if you send a group of ships towards another area of space they will not necessarily land together so with a radical of uh, a certain area there is always a chance that those fleets will drop in this particular area and not all in the same system make sure you keep that in mind otherwise you may end up with a situation where you send several battleships fleets behind enemy lines and they all die because they cannot meet up efficiently and that wraps up the megastructures for Overlord, the Orbital Ring, the Hyper Relay Network, and of course the Quantum Catapult. Make sure you subscribe or check out the Overlord playlist below. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to my patrons for making this video possible. And until next time, take good care of yourselves and yeet yourself across the galaxy.